and welcome to this new episode of smoke testing where today i want to be trying this new brain by grundy the grundy business systems limited i think the company was called and this computer was actually dropped off at my doorstep by the people i got this from from the dutch version of ebay and i of course call this smoke testing because it's, there's always a risk when turning on old electronics that there will be some smoke some people call it magic smoke i would like to refer to it as disgusting smoke but that's just my personal opinion although i have to be honest that this is not going to be that I've tried to mitigate the risk of this making smoke and I'll show you later why I fear that this might smoke or wh why I know that this can smoke so I did something that maybe some people will find annoying but I removed the reefer cap from the power supply and replaced it with another one and it's actually pretty easy to swap although I did it in a Maybe not too beautiful way. I just clipped off the legs of the reefer cap and then just soldered on the new one. So we're going to try this a new brain. And I have this little monitor ready that I maybe need to prop up. Maybe it's nice if you can see it like that. So I'll be connecting the monitor. So I'll be using this as the power switch. So now it should be turned off. So we plugged it in. It's a nifty little computer this, by the way, the new brain. It was released in 1982, I believe. And when I was reading up, when I was reading some stuff about this, I believe that even Clive Sinclair was involved in the design. And it's also got to do something with the BBC Micro, but maybe that requires a little bit more in-depth research. So it's plugged in. It has this single line display. My feeling says this is not going to work because it's a bit wobbly. So I think someone has been inside or there's something with the feet. But fingers crossed that the reefer cap I replaced it with is not going to pop. This one looked like it was ready to pop. There we go. Video, I see some output. It's picking up something. AV Pell. Yeah, I don't want to be powering it on for too long. So maybe need to check the voltages on the power supply. It's a little bit safer, I think. Before we move on to something else, I wanted to show you this because it also came with some documentation. I like this design of the handbook a lot and interestingly although it didn't come with a disk drive it has this handbook for disk users and this beginner's guide and of course as most manuals from the 1980s it's a very in-depth look at how the computer works although I got to say that it's tough to find software for this computer online but i want to move on because in the beginning i said that i knew that this had the potential and the risk of smoking and that is because 
this is my second new brain because I already had this one. This also came with its own documentation. So it also has the handbook and this one by the users group. And I gotta say that in the Netherlands we had a quite extensive new brain user group. I saw when I was looking around online. So here is my other new brain. I haven't seen it in a while because that dodgy power supply because let me show you what happened when I put this in the power the first time I got it. So this one is a little bit more clean and a little bit less yellowed in comparison to this one. And what I wonder is, I know that this is the AD and there was another, another model. Let me take a look at my notes. Yeah, there was also an A model. So I wonder what type this is. Probably, I would say also an AD. Yeah, so this is also an AD model. Serial number 101613. Let's see what is the serial number. And this one also needs a bit of a clean. And this is a much higher serial number than the other one. So I want to try that power supply also with this computer and see what happens. This connector of our video seems to be a little bit more sturdy than the other one. Let's connect it. Speaking of being able to find software, the ports on the back for tape. Gotta be a little bit careful. The ZV1 has the slowest zoom ever. But these are the ports for, for connecting a tape drive. So, fingers crossed, we have the same, something's happening, oh that's not particularly looking good. One more time. No. This one died, I think. So they all give this white screen. They both give this white screen. Note that on the inside this computer is a bit dense. weird. When I wiggle around the video connector of the newest new brain, it sometimes shows a very a more whitish uh, display, which makes me want to use the UHF output to see if that maybe displays a video, because clearly there's something wrong with the composite connector, and I want to try the UHF. So I'm going to use this little camping CRT.
which luckily pretty much takes the same input as these little Philips monitors, which were probably for in a car, in the back of a car. And they're very uh, nice to just simply test the output of a device. So I've connected it to the little CRT. I'm not going to bother with syncing it just yet. I really just want to look for a signal. This is in, yeah, it's in UHF. Oh, here it's the most dark on the top as well. Yeah. I found the signal, but there's not really anything happening. So that brings me to the end of this smoke test of these two new brains by Grundy. One which looks very new and is very dead and one that's a bit beat up but is doing some video output. I read online that these have capacitors. I believe somewhere here are a bunch of small capacitors that are worth replacing when they have a wide screen. Uh, this one has a wide screen. This had a wide screen but then it sort of died. I fear that it might be due to the power supply. I fear that that was because the power supply voltage was too high for this one, which is sort of weird since this one seemed to be fine with it. I'll have to look for a good pinout on the power supply because it was... I got out my a multimeter but it was a bit difficult to register the voltages. I'll have to take a better look at that in the future. And that brings us to that power supply. I have two, of course. This is the one that I put the new Reefa cap in. I don't remember if I put a Reefa cap in the other power supply. But what I could try, although I think it would require some internal changes, is to just provide power via the cable with my bench supply. I'm not sure if that's possible, it's probably not. It would require some internal changes that are above my pay grade probably. But that was just a quick look. I promise that if they return we'll do a bit of a deeper dive in the history of these because I think it might be interesting seeing that it's related to the BBC Micro and that Clive Sinclair has something to do with it. Um, but that wraps up this video. I want to thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.